This video is about Microsoft Forms in Microsoft 365. So this is a product that is included with most license packages. In particular, this is about form pre-filling. So form pre-filling is where you use your hyperlink that you send to a person to fill out a form. And that hyperlink has parameters that set fields in your form. So what this lets you do is it lets you collect feedback about specific things. So it lets you link that back to a particular ID of a product or an ID of a course or a particular instruction instructor without using different forms every single time. So if you're collecting the same fields, you don't want to have to create a new form every single time you want to collect feedback on that, right? And keep it all in one place. So here's what it looks like. You can see that these two fields are set. I did not set these fields. They were set automatically when I clicked the link. We can make this dynamic so that they are set for a whole list of courses. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute, but let's set up our form first. So I'm going to head to Microsoft Forms. It's in the app launcher in the waffle menu up here. You want to create your form in a Microsoft 365 group. So that would be down here. Choose a group to put it in first. What this does is it helps with the sync to Excel feature for the responses. When you sync the responses to Excel, makes it a lot easier to report on your data in a automated way. So you can connect directly to that Excel file in Power BI and schedule a refresh on it. It's also just a safer place to store your form data because it's not linked to your account. So if you don't put it in a group, if you leave your organization, it goes away. Usually your organization is not cool with that. So put it in a group. If you've already created your form, you can move it to a group. So for example, this one, if I click on this ellipses menu here, I have the option to move to a group. I'm going to create mine in this site here. So I'm going to create a new group form. The first couple of fields that I want to add are going to be the ID fields that we're going to be programmatically setting. So course ID and instructor ID for me, you can add whatever you want. And something that I really wish Microsoft would do is let you hide these fields or lock them so that your user can't edit them. That is something that I submitted on the ideas forum. So I'm going to link to that on the screen and in the comments section. If you also would like to be able to hide or lock these particular things that we are presetting, you can go vote on it. That's how changes get made to this platform. So course ID, instructor ID, and then I'm going to add my ratings questions. All right, so we have our form. Now we need to pre-fill our fields. So what we're going to do is go to this ellipses menu in the top right corner here, click on that, and then click on this get pre-filled URL option. So what that does is it lets us set specific things to specific values and then create a hyperlink for it. So we're going to toggle this enable pre-filled answers on so that we can set these. So I'm going to put placeholders in here because what we're going to do is we're going to generate this link for a whole list of things but we need something in there in order to generate the link. All right, so once you've set the things that you want to set, you can scroll down to the bottom and click on this get pre-filled link button. Make sure not to preset any of the questions you're actually wanting people to fill out, okay? Just those two ID fields. And this link here is one that we want. I'm gonna put this into a text editor so you can see it. The structure of this matters. So what we want is if we look for the and symbols in this URL, that's going to be where the different parts of the URL parameters are at. So this first part here is our form ID. The second part here is the first field that we're pre-filling. And here's the value. So it equals CS101. And then there's an and, and then this ID for the second field here equals, and then the value. So we're going to use this as a calculated column in Excel and in Power BI. And I'll show you what the formula for that looks like. So I'm going to take this first part here up to this first equals sign, not including the value, and I'm going to copy it. And then if I go to Excel, so I'm showing you how to do this in both tools, by the way, in case you're liking one more than the other, you don't need to do both. So we're going to add a column in here for feedback URL. And then I'm going to insert a table around this. This is personal preference. You don't have to. So insert menu table. Okay. I don't know why this one has a different color font than the other ones, whatever. All right. So what we're going to do is click on this first empty cell here, and we're going to do an, a concatenate formula. So equals concat, and then we're going to paste in that value we just copied and we're going to put double quotes around it like that 
and then a comma. And then we're going to select this course ID field here to the left. So the one in the same row that we are editing and then add another comma. So what that's going to do is it's going to insert that value when it concatenates. And now we need the second part of our URL. So that is don't take this value here because that's the part we inserted. Just start at this and sign and get this ID equals part here. Paste that in in double quotes and do another comma and then click on this instructor ID field and close the parentheses. Hit enter and there's our URL. So we're gonna try one of these and make sure it works. So I'm gonna use actually set, I'm gonna close this and set this to anonymous real quick so that we can see what it looks like for anybody. I'm gonna set this to anyone can respond and open up an incognito window so we can test it. So here's what a survey submitter would see if they were to go to this hyperlink. The course ID is filled in, the instructor ID is filled in, the rest of the fields are not filled in. So that's what we want. I'm just going to submit this so that I have some data in here to look at in a minute and submit. So that was Excel. Let's do the same thing in Power BI with a custom column so you can see what that looks like. So I'm planning on doing a part two here to show how to connect to the survey data and how to model the survey data. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, we're just going to get these URL parameter links. So first thing we want to do is go to add column here and then choose custom column from the menu. And we're going to name this the same thing. So you could potentially automate the process of sending out links this way because Power Automate can send emails and it can query this data. So that's an option. So I'm going to do the same thing we did before. Did I copy? I need to recopy this here. We want up through this first equals sign and it goes in double quotes and we are using M code in Power Query. So what that does is you concatenate with the and symbol instead of commas. So we're going to do and and then we're going to insert our course ID by double clicking on it and then do another and and then we're going to copy everything after that example value here up through the next equals sign and put that in double quotes and then do another and sign and then this instructor id so this was a number in my data numbers you can't directly concatenate you have to convert them from a number to text first so i am going to use the formula number to text and then use a parentheses and i can't click over here now because this is in the way. Click over here and then click back. There we go. Okay, so insert our instructor ID, then close the parentheses and then click okay. So we can check to see if that worked here. I'm going to copy and paste this. It did. So that's good. So one other thing to do if you are making any kind of hyperlinks in Power BI, I'm going to close and apply this, is um, you want to set the data type on it so that it's actually a hyperlink. So that's in if you select your field then go to the column tools in the ribbon and then make sure this is set to web URL. It will default to uncategorized. So mine is already set to web URL. Yours probably won't be. So then what you can do with this is make a clickable hyperlink in tables, that kind of thing. You can let people copy the values out and send them an email, whatever you like. So that's how that works. And then let's go look at the data structure of what this outputs. You can see it. So if I go back to my form and then open up the responses here, I can open the results in Excel and that'll show you what this looks like. So you can see we are tracking the course ID and the instructor ID here. We have the ratings. So now we can connect to this and visualize the performance of different courses in comparison to one another. So thank you for watching. Hope this was useful and have a great day.